Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Autotempest.com and if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you're probably familiar with what Autotempest does. It searches all the major online car sites at once and brings all that info into one place. Using Autotempest makes you feel like you've saved time and therefore money. And what you might not know, because you've probably heard of Autotempest a lot since then, is that the Smoking Tire was actually the very first YouTube channel that Autotempest ever sponsored back in 2017. They've kept us going through some really tough times and Auto Tempest is the title sponsor for a new project that I can't quite tell you about just yet, but it's bigger than anything we've done in a while. So thank autotempest.com for supporting this video. Make sure to use autotempest.com every time you're looking for a new car or a used car. And now enjoy this video. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the canyons. And boy, is it a great day anytime you're up here in the Angeles Forest with the new Ferrari. This is the F8 Spider. And granted, yes, it's not brand, brand new. I don't have the kind of pull to be driving these things back in January. You know what I mean? So, guys like me, the little guys, we have to say, you know, thank you, sir. May I have another uh, in August? <laughs> the F8 Tributo Coupe. Coupe starts at 275,000, give or take. The F8 Spider starts at 297,000, give or take. You get the same 3.9 liter twin turbo V8 uh, that you got from the outgoing 488 Pista, making 710 horsepower and 568 pound feet of torque. That's 49 horsepower and seven pound feet more than the 488 Spider I drove last year. You have double wishbone suspension architecture. You have an aluminum chassis structure. It is not a full carbon tubbed car, and that will come up uh, in a minute. Um, but the magnetic ride uh, control with several modes gives you a really good ride. Your peak torque is at uh, 3,250 RPM, and peak horsepower is at 7,000 with your red line at eight, giving you an effective power band of 4,750 RPM, which is fantastic. Um, top goes up or down in 14 seconds. It is a hard top. And uh, the Spider weighs 154 pounds more than the Coupe, which means it's actually on the heavier side for a Ferrari. The estimates I could find on the internet put this thing in the 3,600 uh, pound range. Carbon ceramic brakes, of course, are standard. Uh, here we go. We are going to go into manual mode. We're in race on the Manatino. And we're off. This one does not have nose lift. And we'll talk about options at the end of the video. Let's talk about driving first. It doesn't take much to tell that the F8 is the evolution of the Ferrari mid-engine platform that began back in 2010 with the 458 Italia. Some may say that we are experiencing the school of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There is certainly an argument for that. This car drives absolutely beautifully, uh, and they have evolved it in some ways that are very interesting. It's got. 200 horsepower more than it had when it first came out in 2010. Turbocharged. They've recalibrated the steering. The F8 has heavier steering than I remember in the last 488 Spider. It also has a thinner spoked steering wheel. I remember the last one being a little more chunky. The weight of the steering is quite nice. It's not too heavy. I like it. power obviously is ridiculous. When I drove the 488 Spider, I ended that video astonished that it doesn't require some kind of special licensing or testing to buy or drive something like that. There's the red line. The power is just insane. The power to weight is just insane. Even at 3,600 pounds and change, the power to weight is crazy. 
it's not as scary as the 720 in terms of, oh my God. And then we've got our mid corner bumps. You see, there's nothing inherently wrong with an aluminum chassis structure, especially in the coupes where you have the rigidity of a roof. Oh, passing lane ahead, no problem. In the Spider, though, where you don't have that, and I'm gonna sound like one of those UK car reviewing snobs when I say this, I can't believe that I can actually feel the lack of chassis rigidity in this Spider. perhaps for the first time ever, uh, compared to the McLarens that I have been driving, uh, when I hit bumps, I can feel uh, a little bit of cowl shake. Here we go. Sport 4S tires are standard, and this car has the optional forged wheels with optional titanium wheel bolts. They're $1,700. But the grip is excellent. The predictability is very good. The one thing it's kind of missing is the sound. It's, it's, it's quiet. The F8 compared to the 488 has that new EU particulate filter. So even though you've got extra horsepower compared to before, I could swear it's quieter. It's a very pleasant sound, especially on the cold start in the garage, and especially when it does some of those little hiccups and sputters that I love that give it a little more character, you know? But the bottom line is, from about 5,000 RPM until redline, the sound stays exactly the same. And so you have to rely on either the tack or these very cool shift lights on the steering wheel to know when to shift. You can no longer drive this car by ear. That doesn't mean it's not exciting. It is incredibly exciting. It's very fast, it's very visceral. The brake pedal feels an awful lot like it does in the McLarens, where it almost feels like a non-assisted brake that you've really got to apply a lot of pressure to. If you're light on the brakes, if you're used to a very boosted brake pedal, you might go, oh my God, it might not stop. You just have to stand on it harder. That's how race cars work. Obviously, the gearbox is just as responsive as ever. Seven speed, dual clutch, manufactured by Graziano and uh, shared uh, from a hardware perspective with the McLarens. As I've said in other Ferraris, in this state of tune, the gearbox feels more like a helpful friend than a servile robot. You know, a PDK gearbox, that's a servile German robot. It will do exactly what is told in the exact same way every time. This is a helpful friend. It does what it's told, but it's got a little more character about how it does it. Depending on your throttle position and your mode and stuff like that, it can kick or open or close the clutches in different ways. In fact, one of my favorite things about this car is how hard it closes the clutch plates once it engages. In race mode, it opens and, clutch and closes them with this real firmness. It's sort of a different ethos from the Porsches where the Porsche goes, okay, how do I not interrupt torque? Whereas the Ferrari goes, interrupt it, but just for a second, but make sure they know you open and close those clutches. very fast, obviously. But I, with the top down, I like, I hear engine, but it's just not dominating the experience. It 
Enzo Ferrari, remember? Enzo Ferrari used to call everyone else the garagistes, the men who cannot build engines. You know, ultimately the Ferrari is about the engine. I mean, there's the styling, of course, and, and the performance, but, but the engine is the heart and soul of it, obviously. And so, how many times have I said obviously in this video? We'll do a little launch here. And so, if the engine isn't making it into my brain, CS, CT off. No, that's not it. Is it race? Launch control? No. Full off? Full off? How about a launch now? Oh, launch button. Duh. Launch mode enabled. Here we go. And shazam! Wow. Whoa! That was impressive. <laughs> Car and driver says this thing will do zero to 60 in the twos, which for a rear drive car, fabulous. And based on that launch, no reason to doubt that statistic. I mean, it's crazy fast, guys, crazy fast. I really like the brake feel. It's such a good firm pedal, but it it provides some really good tactile feedback. Hit red line there. Whoa! It's kind of a shame that with the turbo motors, you know, the sweet spot is in the middle, right? It's the meat where you're getting that big boost and it dies a thousand RPM shy of the red line. It's definitely anti-traditional Ferrari, right? I think this is the way of the future. But I just don't know how much faster they can make this. Like, my brain can't really think any faster than this. Oh, the grip is very good. For something so crazy fast though, it's also very manageable. That's the thing about it, the cars like this. This car is not work. This thing is so easy to drive. The steering is so sharp. I mean, yes, you could sail it off a cliff because it's so fast, but any reasonably competent driver could also really make moves in this thing. Confidently. It handles bumps in the road really well. It handles mid corner adjustments. Starting to smell some brakes. I mean, this is rad. This is just so, so good. Wow, the way it eats up the road. The pace that you're capable of is really, really crazy. But what's really amazing is that it's this pace, the crazy, crazy, crazy pace, but then the ease. This is a daily driver, guys. I, need, I don't know if, I ha if this requires explaining, but it should. Because there are still people that buy cars like the F8 Spider and squirrel them away for special occasions. That's hilarious. If you're doing that because you can't afford to lose on the depreciation, that's sad, I get it, but maybe you should buy a different car. The fact of the matter is, miles on a car like this are very cheap. And the fact that it's so easy to drive every day, it's got a very big trunk for a mid-engine car. It's very spacious for tall people. It's got a light and airy cabin. Hang on, let's negotiate this big sweeper and then talk. Whoa! <laughs> wow, the power in sixth gear, amazing. But it's so easy to daily. 
Like, there's some people who will, like, call you hardcore if you daily something like this. Or there's people who will write articles that are like, OMG, I dailyed a Ferrari Spider for a week, meaning this press car. That's embarrassing. Of course you would daily it. They have gone so far out of their way to make this car so easy to use that if you don't daily it, you either can't afford it in the first place because you can't afford the miles, or you just suck. If you, how about you daily a 328, daily a Testarossa, then brag. Dailying something like this, you might as well be dailying a, a BMW M3. This is no harder to drive any every day than a BMW M3, minus the lack of a back seat. Brakes getting a little squeaky. There's some dust that gets in there. They get squeaky when they're dusty. Wow. <laughs> That's nuts, guys. I love it. But it's crazy that the sound is really dominated by the turbochargers. You hear some exhaust, but the sound is really dominated by the turbos, especially in the tunnel, where you're not just hearing that rush of air. You're also, it's really more of this high-pitched, squeaky squeal. It's really, really interesting. We're coming to the end of our road here. And so now is the fun part of the video where we come to an end and I discuss our, uh, our option packages that this car has come with because it is a, it is really, really, <laughs> it is really, really something. Uh, the base price of the F8 Spider is $297,000. As tested, this vehicle is $397,000. It's got 100K in options in it. The list is very long. And while I'm not gonna go through every single one, let's talk about the good options. Best options on the car. Carbon fiber seats, $9,100. Uh, forged wheels in glossy silver, $6,200. Carbon fiber driver zone, meaning the steering wheel with the LED shift lights, uh, that is $8,000. Uh, and then uh, the passenger display, which I love. Touch screen, they can control your media. It also shows your speed, your position, your RPM, and the vehicle dynamics uh, screen on there. That's pretty cool, that's $5,000. Now. The most egregious violators of option code. Uh, whoa! Here we go. Uh, height adjuster lifters for the carbon seats, $2,500. Titanium exhaust pipes, $2,500. This exhaust doesn't sound very good. Get an aftermarket one. Uh, how about uh, carbon fiber inner door handles, $4,200. We don't need that. Apple CarPlay, guys. In 2010, when the 458 came out, I was so happy that Ferrari got away from that terrible Blaupunkt they were using in the 430, I was like, this is better. Aside from CarPlay, they have not evolved it at all. It's a 10-year-old system at this point. I'm sorry, but the radio stinks. The only way to get, get through it to make your life better is to use CarPlay. How much is CarPlay? $4,219. Lastly, the most egregious offender, $5,000 for clear film on the car. That makes sense on the surface. You buy a $400,000 Ferrari, yeah, five grand on paint protection film. Except they've done the windshield and it's blurry. It makes the, it makes the windshield look weird. Whoever did a job wrapping, and there's bubbles. I can see multiple bubbles. So someone charged $5,000 for a factory wrap. They then clear filmed the windshield with the incorrect film and left bubbles on it. Those are my criticisms of the F8 Spider. In almost every other way, this car is fabulous. It's spacious, it's airy, it's comfortable, it's usable, it's extraordinarily fast, it's exotic, it's customizable, and it's almost everything you expect from a Ferrari. I just wish it was louder. So thank you to Ferrari for letting me have a go for a few days. It is always much appreciated when I can get some seat time in this new stuff. Thank you to you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye. And remember, Always fight your tickets. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST 
or use code TST10 on the Off the Record app.